Live Trans and Prosper. Howdy, I'm Dr. Brian Davis Phillips and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the BAV model, Beliefs, Attitudes and uh, Values. Uh, this is a model that was created by Milton Rokich in the 1950s when he was at Michigan studying advertising. Now, according to Rokich, uh, your beliefs, attitudes, and values can be modeled in circles, within circles, within circles. Uh, he imagined your mind with all your beliefs, your attitudes, and your values as if they were circles within circles within circles. Now imagine it as a fruit, but unlike uh, um, a nut, a fruit with a very easy to peel exterior and a very hard nut in kernel in the middle. Okay. Nuts tend to have a hard exterior with good stuff inside. Now your beliefs, your attitudes, and your values are all good stuff, but imagine as if you've got a really hard shell inside, um, uh, really, really tough to crack stuff, and then you've got a little bit less hard, a softer, mushy, and really easy to go. There are five levels. If you imagine a circle within a circle within a circle, that very inner circle is your type A beliefs. Okay? That's got a really hard shell. Okay? It's almost impossible to crack that sucker. Then you got another hard level. Those are your B beliefs. And then your C, D, and E beliefs progressing outward. Now, according to Rokich, your type A beliefs, your very core beliefs, are your beliefs about the nature of reality. Okay, now that can be a social reality. It's your extension into that social reality. So things like your belief of what and how things work. All right. Um, this is a remote made of plastic. I'm sitting at my desk. <coughs> God created the universe. There is no God. All is an illusion. We're actually dreaming right now. And what we think are our dreams are the real reality. Those are A beliefs. If you change someone's A beliefs, you change the entire personality construct. I'm sure many of you have met folks who converted to Christianity, for instance, from another religion or from atheism. And they're often very gung-ho and evangelical or someone who is a very devout religious person who because of a traumatic event or something like that gives up on it and becomes an atheist and their entire personality often changes uh, sometimes for the better sometimes not so much now the next level those are your type b beliefs and those are core beliefs as well but they're about the nature of the self a beliefs are about the nature of reality B beliefs are the nature of the self. Uh, and there are two types of B beliefs. Your B positive and your B negative beliefs. B positive beliefs are positive things that you believe about yourself. The good stuff. Negative beliefs are the bad stuff. So, and here's the thing. Many of your B beliefs were set when you were a child, when you had that tabula rasa that we like to believe exists in children before someone got to you. And this is also why it's very important if you are a parent, a teacher, or anyone who is ever around children to be aware of what they're saying to kids because kids build those B positive and B negative beliefs very early. And here's how those beliefs work. Once you've got a B negative or a B positive belief set, Everything else that comes in, your critical factor will check that against your B positive and B negative beliefs. Now, if something comes in that agrees with a B positive or B negative belief, it's allowed to come in and it reinforces the belief. 
But if something comes in and it's the opposite or disagrees with it, it's bounced back. For instance, I teach at a very, very good university. I teach at National Zhengzhou University in Taiwan. And it is one of the best universities in the country. Uh, and depending upon what survey you're looking at, the, uh, the department that I'm in is either number two or number three for our area of study. Although a recent survey put us at number one. Yay! Uh, but it's a very good school and kids are admitted into the university uh, via ability grouping type things and so I know for a fact that anyone sitting in my classroom is a very bright young person. However, over the 25 years, yes, I'm very old, the 25 plus years I've taught at university, I've met quite a few kids who don't believe they're as bright as objective testing might uh, presume. Uh, they believe that they got here by luck or someday others will find out how foolish they really are, that sort of thing. Because sometime in their childhood, somebody said something stupid to them. Imagine, if you will, we've got two kids. They're both in, let's say, first grade. And a little Johnny takes a test and he gets a 90. Little Billy takes the same test, he gets a 90. Both kids take their test papers home. Now little Johnny, Daddy, oh, got a 90. And his father says, Awesome, son. You're really smart. Boom. Be positive belief formed. Little Billy takes his test home. Daddy, I uh, got a 90. And his father says, Huh, Billy, why didn't you get a 100? Be negative, self-esteem established. So, through their lives, one thinks he's bright, and he does well on tests and scores, and studies have shown that kids who think they're brighter tend to do better, uh, real, in, within a realistic bound, of course. And kids who think they're not so bright, they tend to just shoo, go down the pipe. All right? Now, even though they're both relatively the same brightness, how they perceive their future successes would be very different. Now, I'm sure all of the folks watching this video have met someone, uh, say a woman who is quite attractive, who believes she's unattractive. And she, even though others objectively or subjectively, because attraction is a subjective science, uh, say, wow, you're very pretty, they assume that they're not and how they navigate life goes through that. Other folks, they think they're good enough, they navigate life differently. But those are your be positive, be negative beliefs. And they are relatively difficult to change. However, there are of course techniques to help people with that. I am a hypnotist, I'm a hypnotherapist, as well as an entertainment hypnotist and a hypnosis trainer. Uh, and so I teach plenty of professionals techniques to help folks past uh, be negative beliefs so that they can move on in a healthy way. But those Rokic found those are your negative beliefs. Now Rokic found the next layer, these tertiary beliefs. Uh, he calls them the type C beliefs. Okay? And these are the authorities that we trust. Right? If I'm Catholic, ipso facto, I trust the Pope. It's kind of what being Catholic is. If I'm Mormon, ipso facto, I trust the prophet. Uh, if I'm an atheist, I have various folks who I trust. If I'm a Republican, a Democrat, Kuomintang, um, uh, other political parties, I have folks that I trust. As we, when we were small children, our parents were authorities. We trusted them on anything. And then as we entered school, we began realizing that our parents didn't know everything. Uh, and by the time you hit high school, uh, some folks think my parents don't know anything. But 
that's neither here nor there. Um, as we get older, we begin differentiating authorities by context. So my students might come to me for and believe my authority statements regarding hypnosis or communication, theater, literature, and that sort of thing. Uh, but they don't have to take my word for politics. They need to make their own decisions and have other authority figures. And I have authority figures. So your authority figures, C beliefs, are the people you trust. Your type D beliefs are, those are your peripheral beliefs. Those are the beliefs you get from your authority figures. Pope tells me, uh, Pope's my, I'm Catholic. Pope uh, says, uh, is an authority figure for me. And Pope says, uh, premarital sex is bad. So I believe that. Or I don't, at which point I'm not much of a Catholic now, am I? Or a Mormon, or whatever. But your authority beliefs give you beliefs as well. And those are your D beliefs. And then finally we get our type E beliefs. And these are called our inconsequential beliefs. Guess what those are? Those are beliefs that don't really matter that much in terms of uh, the personality construct. If I believe I'm an alcoholic or I'm not an alcoholic, that affects who I believe I am and my behaviors and how I relate to the universe and other people. But if I believe that Coca-Cola tastes better than Pepsi, so what? I might believe that. And I do. But it doesn't really affect who I am in a great way. Now, Milton Rokich was studying advertisers. And when he looked at this sort of stuff, he was actually looking at how advertisers attempt to link their products, which tend to be inconsequential things, uh, whether you prefer Nike or some other brand of uh, shoe doesn't really affect who you are, but Nike doesn't want you to think that. They want you to associate that their product with more ingrained beliefs, and they do a lot of authority associations, and they do some other things. Um, what brand of uh, deodorant you use, or if you use deodorant at all instead of just showering with, uh, with soap, uh, is really an inconsequential thing. And that's why advertisers created a B negative belief. They actually invented it about the 1950s when Rokich was working. Uh, they created uh, that catchy, catchy term, BO, body odor, and linked your B negative beliefs, or your fears of having a negative aspect in your, in your life, uh, to an inconsequential thing. And so advertisers link these deeper beliefs. But that's Rokich's beliefs, attitudes, and values model. And this has been Dr. Brian David Phillips. Live trans and prosper. Bye-bye.